The term pogrom has multiple meanings, ascribed most often to the deliberate persecution of an ethnic or religious group either approved or condoned by the local authorities. According to Encyclopædia Britannica, the term is usually applied to anti-Jewish violence in the Russian Empire in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. It has been extended to include any attacks against Jews and physical destruction of Jewish property, as well as looting of Jewish homes and businesses, throughout history. The characteristics of a pogrom vary widely, depending on the specific incidents, at times leading to, or culminating in, massacres. All outbreaks of antisemitic violence have become retrospectively known as pogroms. The Russian language term was adopted in the English language in order to describe the mass violence of 1881 and 1882 that was directed against Jews within the Pale of Settlement, which was first created by Catherine the Great in what would become most of present day Ukraine and Belarus, as well as parts of Lithuania, Moldova, and Poland. The term pogrom is sometimes used, as well, to describe publicly sanctioned purgative attacks against non-Jewish ethnic or religious groups. Etymology First recorded in 1882, the Russian word pogrom, pogrom pronounced p -grom is derived from the common prefix po and the verb gromit, gromit pronounced g -r -m -it meaning, to destroy, to wreak havoc, to demolish violently. Its literal translation is, to harm. The noun, pogrom, which has a relatively short history, is used in English and many other languages as a loanword, possibly borrowed from Yiddish where the word takes the form pagrom. Its widespread circulation in today's world began with the anti-Semitic excesses in the Russian Empire in 1881–1883. Historical background Anti-Jewish riots had already taken place in Europe during the Middle Ages. Jewish communities were targeted in the Black Death Jewish persecutions of 1348–1350, in Toulon in 1348, in Barcelona as well as in other Catalan cities, during the Erfurt Massacre 1349, the Basel Massacre, massacres in Aragon and in Flanders, as well as the Valentine's Day, Strasbourg Pogrom of 1349. Some 510 Jewish communities were destroyed during this period, extending further to the Brussels Massacre of 1370. On Holy Saturday of 1389, a pogrom began in Prague that led to the burning of the Jewish quarter, the killing of many Jews, and the suicide of many Jews trapped in the main synagogue. The number of dead was estimated at 400 to 500 men, women, and children. The first atrocities against Jewish civilians, on a genocidal scale of destruction, were committed during the Kamelnitsky pogroms of 1648 to 1657 in present day Ukraine. Modern historians give estimates of the scale of the murders by Kamelnitsky's Cossacks ranging between 40,000 and 100,000 men, women and children, or perhaps many more. The outbreak of violence against Jews, hep hep riots, occurred at the beginning of the 19th century as a reaction to Jewish emancipation in the German Confederation. Topic: <laughs> Russian Empire The Russian Empire, which previously had very few Jews, acquired territories with large Jewish populations during the military partitions of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth in 1772, 1793 and 1795 conducted jointly with the Austrian and Prussian armies, and resulting in Poland's elimination from the geopolitical map of Europe for the next 123 years. In conquered territories, a new political entity called the Pale of Settlement was formed in 1791 by Catherine the Great. Most Jewish people from the former Commonwealth were allowed to reside only within the Pale, including families expelled by royal decree from St. Petersburg, Moscow and other large Russian cities. The 1821 Odessa pogroms marked the beginning of the 19th century pogroms in Tsarist Russia. There were four more such pogroms in Odessa before the end of the century. Following the assassination of Alexander II in 1881 by Narodnaya Volya, blamed on the Jews by the Russian government, anti-Jewish events turned into a wave of over 200 pogroms by their modern definition, which lasted for several years. Jewish self-governing Kahila were abolished by Tsar Nicholas I in 1844, the first in 20th century Russia was the Kishinev pogrom of 1903 in which 47 Jews were killed, hundreds wounded, 700 homes destroyed and 600 businesses pillaged. 
In the same year, pogroms took place in Gomel, Belarus, Smela, Feodosia, and Melitopol, Ukraine. Extreme savagery was typified by mutilations of the wounded. They were followed by the Jatomer pogrom with 29 killed, and the Kiev pogrom of October 1905 resulting in a massacre of approximately 100 Jews. In three years between 1903 and 1906, about 660 pogroms were recorded in Ukraine and Bessarabia, half a dozen more in Belarusia, carried out with the Russian government's complicity, but no anti-Jewish pogroms were recorded in Poland. At about that time, the Jewish Labor Bund began organizing armed self-defense units ready to shoot back, and the pogroms subsided for a number of years. According to Professor Colin Tatz, between 1881 and 1920 there were 1,326 pogroms in Ukraine see, southwestern cry parts of the Pale, which took the lives of 70,000 to 250,000 civilian Jews, leaving half a million homeless. Russian Civil War period Large-scale pogroms, which began in the Russian Empire several decades earlier, intensified during the period of the Russian Civil War and the Revolution of 1917. Professor Zvi Gittelman a century of ambivalence estimated that only in 1918-1919 over 1,200 pogroms took place in Ukraine, thus amounting to the greatest slaughter of Jews in Eastern Europe since 1648. Alexander Solzhenitsyn in his book 200 Years Together provided additional statistics from research conducted by Nahum Gurgel Gurgel counted 1,236 incidents of anti-Jewish violence and estimated that 887 mass pogroms occurred, the remainder being classified as excesses, not assuming mass proportions. The Kiev pogroms of 1919, according to Gittelman, were the first of a subsequent wave of pogroms in which between 30,000 and 70,000 Jews were massacred across Ukraine. Of all the pogroms accounted for in Gurgel's research, about 40% were perpetrated by the Ukrainian People's Republic forces led by Simon Petlyura, 25% by the Ukrainian Green Army and various Ukrainian nationalist gangs, and 17% by the White Army, especially the forces of Anton Denikin. A further 8.5% of Gurgel's total was attributed to pogroms carried out by men of the Red Army although these pogroms were not sanctioned by the Bolshevik leadership, the high command disarmed the regiments which had perpetrated pogroms. The Ukrainian People's Republic of Simon Petlyura also issued orders condemning pogroms, but lacked authority to intervene. After May 1919 the Directory lost its role as a credible governing body, almost 75% of pogroms occurred between May and September of that year. Thousands of Jews were killed only for being Jewish, without any political affiliations. The instructions issued from above had only a limited impact on soldiers' attitudes toward violence against Jews, as related by author and future Nobel laureate Ivan Bunin. On May 15, 1919, Bunin wrote in his diary about yet another massacre. Members of the Red Army in Odessa led a pogrom against the Jewish population in the town of Big Fountain. Ovzyaniko Kulikovsky and the writer Kapen happened to be there and told me the details. Fourteen commissars and thirty Jews from among the common people were killed. Many stores were destroyed. The soldiers tore through the night, dragged the victims from their beds, and killed whomever they met. People ran into the steppe or rushed into the sea. They were chased after and fired upon, a genuine hunt, as it were. Kapen saved himself by accident, fortunately he had spent the night not in his home, but at the White Flower Sanatorium. At dawn, a detachment of Red Army soldiers appeared. Are there any Jews here? They asked the watchman. No, no Jews here, swear what you're saying is true, the watchman swore, and they went on farther. Moise Gutman, a cab driver, was killed. He was a dear man who moved us from our dacha last fall. Gurgel's overall figures, which are generally considered conservative, are based on the testimony of witnesses and newspaper reports collected by the Mizrach Yiddish Historische Archive which was first based in Kiev, then Berlin and later New York. The English version of Gurgel's article was published in 1951 in the YIVO Annual of Jewish Social Science titled, The Pogroms in the Ukraine in 1918-1921. In June 1919, during the Polish-Soviet War, the Jewish 1st Guard Battalion from Minsk, at the insistence of its own members, was deployed by the Bolsheviks against the Polish army which included the 1st and the 2nd Lithuanian Belarusian divisions. The Jews had won the first skirmish, forcing them to retreat several kilometers. 
On 8 August 1919, Polish troops took over the city in Operation Minsk, killed 31 Jews merely suspected of supporting the Bolshevist movement, beat and attacked many more, looted 377 Jewish-owned shops aided by the local civilians and ransacked many private homes. The aftermath of the pogrom in Minsk was described on an emotional level by Rabbi Yeshekel Abramsky in July 1920. The Morgenthau's report of October 1919 stated that there is no question that some of the Jewish leaders exaggerated these evils. According to Alyssa Bemperid, the violence endured by the Jewish population under the Poles encouraged popular support for the Red Army, as Jewish public opinion welcomed the establishment of the Belarusian SSR. Irrespective of war zone violence, the Jewish political groups, communal institutions and cultural organizations of all stripes were active in the Second Polish Republic. Topic: Outside Russia. In the early 20th century, pogroms broke out elsewhere in the world as well. In 1904 in Ireland, the Limerick boycott caused several Jewish families to leave the town. During the 1911 Tredegar riot in Wales, Jewish homes and businesses were looted and burned over the period of a week, before the British Army was called in by then Home Secretary Winston Churchill, who described the riot as a pogrom. In 1919 there was a pogrom in Argentina, during the tragic week, after the First World War, during the localised armed conflicts of independence, 72 Jews were killed and 443 injured in the 1918 Lwów pogrom. The following year, pogroms were reported by the New York Tribune in several cities in the newly reborn Poland. However, the reports were not only exaggerated but also manufactured by the German legation in Warsaw, quietly opposed to the rebirth of Poland after a century of imperial partitions. The German reports were delivered to Zionist headquarters and the foreign press elsewhere by the official services of the Wilhelmstrasse. Meanwhile, in the mandatory Palestine under British administration, the Jews were targeted in the 1929 Hebron massacre and the 1929 Safed pogrom. The first pogrom in Nazi Germany was the Kristallnacht, often called Pogromnacht, in which at least 91 Jews were killed, a further 30,000 arrested and incarcerated in Nazi concentration camps, over 1,000 synagogues burned, and over 7,000 Jewish businesses destroyed or damaged. Topic. Nazi occupied Europe During World War II, Nazi German death squads encouraged local populations in German occupied Europe to commit pogroms against Jews. Brand new battalions of Volkstutcher Selbschitz trained by SD agents were mobilized from among the German minorities. During Operation Barbarossa which lasted from June 22 to December 5, 1941, Reichsfuhrer SS Heinrich Himmler established the Schutzmannschaft Collaborationist Auxiliary Battalions and tasked them with carrying out pogroms behind the front lines. A large number of pogroms occurred during the Holocaust at the hands of non-Germans. Perhaps the deadliest of these Holocaust-era pogroms was the IAC pogrom in Romania, in which as many as 13,266 Jews were killed by Romanian citizens, police and military officials, on 1–2 June 1941, in the two-day Farhood pogrom in Iraq. Rioters murdered between 150 and 180 Jews, injured 600 others, and raped an undetermined number of women. They also looted some 1,500 stores and homes." In June–July 1941, encouraged by the Einsatzgruppen in the city of Lviv, location of the Lwów ghetto, the Ukrainian People's Militia soon reorganized as the Ukrainian Auxiliary Police perpetrated two citywide pogroms in which around 6,000 Polish Jews were murdered, in retribution for alleged collaboration with the Soviet NKVD. The controversy surrounding the Lviv pogroms of 1941 is still debated today. On 12 October 1941 in Stanislaw, some 10,000 to 12,000 Jewish men, women and children were shot in the Jewish cemetery by the Germans and the Ukrainian Auxiliary Police during so-called Bloody Sunday. De. The shooters began firing at 12 noon, and continued without stopping by taking turns. 
It was the single largest massacre of Jews in the general government prior to mass gassings of Action Reinhard. In Lithuania, some local police led by Algirdas Klimitis and Lithuanian partisans, consisting of LAF units reinforced by 3,600 deserters from the 29th Lithuanian Territorial Corps of the Red Army, promulgated anti Jewish pogroms in Kaunas along with occupying Nazis. On 25 to 26 June 1941, about 3,800 Jews were killed and synagogues and Jewish settlements burned. During the Jedwabna pogrom of July 1941, ethnic Poles burned at least 340 Jews in a barn, Institute of National Remembrance, in the presence of Nazi German Ordnungspolizei. The role of the German Einsatzgruppe B remains the subject of debate. Topic: After World War II. After the end of World War II, a series of violent anti-Semitic incidents occurred against returning Jews throughout Europe, particularly in the Soviet-occupied East where Nazi propagandists had extensively promoted the notion of a Jewish communist conspiracy see anti-Jewish violence in Poland, 1944–1946 and anti-Jewish violence in Eastern Europe, 1944–1946. Anti-Jewish riots also took place in Britain in 1947. In the Arab world, anti-Jewish rioters killed over 140 Jews in the 1945 anti-Jewish riots in Tripolitania. Following the start of the 1947–48 civil war in Mandatory Palestine, a number of anti-Jewish events occurred throughout the Arab world, some of which have been described as pogroms. In 1947, half of Aleppo's 10,000 Jews left the city in the wake of the Aleppo riots, while other anti-Jewish riots took place in British Aden and the French Moroccan cities of Oujda and Jarada. Usage According to Encyclopædia Britannica, the term is usually applied to attacks on Jews in the Russian Empire in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, and the first extensive pogroms followed the assassination of Tsar Alexander II in 1881, and the Wiley Blackwell Dictionary of Modern European History since 1789 states that pogroms were anti Semitic disturbances that periodically occurred within the Tsarist Empire. However, the term is widely used to refer to many events which occurred prior to the anti-Jewish pogroms in the Russian Empire. Historian of Russian Jewry John Clear writes in Russians, Jews, and the Pogroms of 1881-1882 that, by the 20th century, the word pogrom had become a generic term in English for all forms of collective violence directed against Jews. Abramson wrote that, in mainstream usage the word has come to imply an act of antisemitism. Since while, Jews have not been the only group to suffer under this phenomenon, historically Jews have been frequent victims of such violence. The term is also used in reference to attacks on non-Jewish ethnic minorities, and accordingly some scholars do not include antisemitism as the defining characteristic of pogroms. Reviewing its uses in scholarly literature, historian Werner Bergman proposes that pogroms should be defined as a unilateral, non-governmental form of collective violence initiated by the majority population against a largely defenseless ethnic group, and he states that pogroms occur when the majority expects the state to provide them with no assistance in overcoming a perceived threat from the minority." But he adds that in Western usage, the words, "...anti-Semitic overtones," have been retained. Historian David Engel supports this, writing that, there can be no logically or empirically compelling grounds for declaring that some particular episode does or does not merit the label pogrom, but states that the majority of the incidents, habitually, described as pogroms took place in societies significantly divided by ethnicity and or religion where the violence was committed by the higher-ranking group against a stereotyped lower-ranking group against whom they expressed some complaint, and with the belief that the law of the land would not be used to stop them, there is no universally accepted set of characteristics which define the term pogrom. Clear writes that when applied indiscriminately to events in Eastern Europe, the term can be misleading, the more so when it implies that pogroms were regular events in the region and that they always shared common features. Use of the term pogrom to refer to events in 1918-19 in Polish cities including Kielce, Pinsk and Lwów was specifically avoided in the 1919 Morgenthau report and the word excesses 
was used instead because the authors argued that the use of the term pogrom required a situation to be anti-Semitic rather than political in nature, which meant that it was inapplicable to the conditions existing in a war zone, and media use of the term pogrom to refer to the 1991 Crown Heights riot caused public controversy. In 2008, two separate attacks in the West Bank by Israeli Jewish settlers on Palestinian Arabs were characterized as pogroms by then Prime Minister of Israel Ehud Olmert. Werner Bergman suggests a particularly unifying characteristic of all such incidents, b why the collective attribution of a threat, the pogrom differs from other forms of violence, such as lynchings, which are directed at individual members of a minority group, while the imbalance of power in favor of the rioters distinguishes pogroms from other forms of riot food riots, race riots or communal riots between evenly matched groups, and again, the low level of organization separates them from vigilantism, terrorism, massacre and genocide. Topic selected list of events named pogroms This is a partial list of events for which one of the commonly accepted names includes the word pogrom. Topic see also Ethnic cleansing Genocidal massacre Kristallnacht Topic Notes Topic Citations Topic Further reading Bergman, Werner 2003, Pogroms, in Heitmeyer, Wilhelm, Hagen, John, International Handbook of Violence Research, 1, Dordrecht, Kluwer Academic Publishers, ISBN 978-1-4020-1466-6 Brass, Paul R. December 6, 2002. On the Study of Riots, Pogroms, and Genocide. Sawyer Seminar Session on Processes of Mass Killing. Center for Advanced Study in the Behavioral Sciences, Stanford University. Cohn, Norman 1966. Warrant for Genocide, The Myth of the Jewish World Conspiracy and the Protocols of the Elders of Zion. New York, Harper and Row. OCLC 220903085. Engel, David 2010, What's in a Pogrom? European Jews in the Age of Violence, in Dekel Chen, Jonathan, Anti-Jewish Violence, Rethinking the Pogrom in East European History, Bloomington, Indiana, Indiana University Press, ISBN 978-0-253-35520-1 Horvitz, Leslie A., Catherwood, Christopher, eds. 2006. Encyclopedia of War Crimes and Genocide. New York, New York, Facts on File. ISBN 978-0-8160-6001-6. Clear, John D., ed., 2011, What Was a Pogrom? Russians, Jews, and the Pogroms of 1881-1882, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, ISBN 978-0-521-89548-4 Shelton, Dinah, ed., 2005. Encyclopedia of Genocide and Crimes Against Humanity. Detroit, Macmillan Reference. ISBN 978-0-02-865847-6. Thakra, John R., ed., 1987. Encyclopedia of Terrorism and Political Violence. London, Routledge and Keegan Paul. ISBN 978-0-7102-0659-6.